Financial markets rely on an understanding of support and resistance levels. For example, if I was to draw a price chart here, you can notice this total crypto market cap, it's moving in a wave. That's very, very normal. Say we had price action that looks something like this. What you can see is price came up, hit some kind of resistance and then came down, was supported in price and then went up hit some kind of resistance and went down. These resistance levels and support levels are very important to know about. In fact, you can't be profitable consistently if you don't know about support and resistance. The concept of buying at the bottom and selling at the top is really difficult to do. In fact, most people actually sell at the bottom and buy at the top. Why is this? Because things get pretty dark when price is coming down and people just think it's never going to turn around. So then they say, oh, I'm out of here, I'm selling. And when all the excitement and enthusiasm is inside the market, people say, wow, this is fantastic. I'm going to buy. And then suddenly, what do we see? The price falls down. Why is that? Because there's some internal structure inside the markets a resistance structure. There are two basic ways to draw support and resistance. One is a retail level. The other one is a smart money level. Retail support and resistance is just literally the chart that they view. They'll say, oh, there's a resistance level here. There's a resistance level here. There's one here. Oh, I see one there. Or is it up there? Or could it be down there? I'm not quite sure. But what about this? Oh, there's a support here. There's a support there. There's a support there. Or could it be down there? Oh, actually, is that resistance up the top? Or, oh, maybe this resistance is here and not there. Oh, I'm not quite sure. This is how the, res <laughs> the, how the retail mind thinks about support and resistance. It's actually not like this at all. If you're new to our community, a very warm welcome. And I'd like to introduce you to ODMS. ODMS is Objective Dynamic Market Structure. Just down here, Objective Dynamic Market Structure. And what this particularly means, Objective Dynamic Market Structure, is the concept the price is always changing. So therefore, the support and resistance levels always change as well. There's another point, point to this, not just the dynamic point, but the structural point. In order to do and apply ODMS, Objective Dynamic Market Structure, to a chart, you must look up all of price history, not just a section of it. When we look at this particular chart, and we could be looking at any chart, the, the concept is it's always the same. If we try to find support and resistance within a narrow time frame, here it's three days, 22 hours. Let's just make it four days. Let's round it up. But how long has total been around? Say we assume that total has been around since the 1st of January 2014. That's 35, 75 days. 3,575. Let's just look at it this way. Four days on 35, 75 days. What is that as a percentage? It's a very, very low percentage. Let's multiply that out. 0.1 of a percent, like literally one tenth of one percent of price action. What does this practically mean if we're looking at one tenth of one percent in terms of price action and saying the resistance level is here? Or is it drawn to the tip or is it drawn through the bodies of the candle? That's another thing that you might want to just pay close attention to. When you see many different people marking up a chart, some people will mark it to the candle bodies, others will mark it to the high or down to the low. They're very, very different things to do. That's why before I showed you, is it here or is it there? The concept is this is one tenth of 1% of price action. And a lot of people will just zoom in here and say, oh, okay, that, that got rejected here because of this, or was it because of that? The real key is objective dynamic market structure, which marks up all of price history. 
This is where the CTKS method comes in. The CTKS method marks up all of price history, but it does so according to international standards. Not just that, but it does so with a completely new methodology. The result of the CTKS method markup are the things called SLs or Stanfield levels. They're a line that's drawn and they're drawn in a variety of different thicknesses. I'll just pop on the indicator so that you know where they are. You can see that there are SLs around here. There's one here, there's one there, and there's one there. This one is thicker than those ones. Those ones are about the same weight. What does this actually mean? What does, it, what does the CTKS method actually do? It shows you where smart money is buying and selling. When we look at total crypto market cap, this is also a structural SL at that $1.051 trillion mark. This is how the entire crypto market is moving. It's very important to look at total crypto market cap. One thing that we can see, price got up above this structural resistance level, but could not hold it. It came back, retested, and then came down to the safety nets inside market structure. These confluences of SL. In fact, what we say is price is always moving SL to SL. And if you get a confluence of SLs, that's even better, especially when price is coming down. And the thing to remember on this particular chart, this chart is a 30 minute chart. So we're observing each candlestick is 30 minutes from the start to the end of that particular candlestick. I was saying before that it's very important to know where the resistance is and where the support is inside the market. We can do it from the retail sense. We can just mark up one tenth of 1% of price history and say, yes, these are the most important lines that ever existed, but it's not true. What we need to do instead is need to approach charts from a scientific basis. That's exactly what these SLs represent. This is all of price history marked up. When you get a confluence of SLs, it forms a strong layer, but it doesn't mean it can't get broken down and penetrated through. That's often the case. These areas are magnetized. That's why it doesn't dead on stop it when it gets there and just reverses. That's the kind of price behavior people expect when they first get into the markets, but it's not what happens in truth. How would we interpret this? We can see total crypto market cap at the current time. It's above multiple levels of structural support. When a line, a structural line is below the current price, it's support. When it's above the current price, it is resistance. So these levels of structural support, and we know they're structural because they're drawn through the standards-based process of the CTKS method. We know that the buyers are coming in here crypto-wide and pushing price up. This would mean across all your favorite crypto projects, there are buyers coming in and pushing the price up. Does this mean it will continue? The truth is perhaps, perhaps not. One way that you can tell, well, there are a lot of ways that you can tell, but you can also draw uh, diagonal lines across price action to determine if you're getting a cut over in price. Generally, when you get a cut over in price, that's a very, very good sign. What it means is that you've got a level of support that's coming into the market because the downgrading of that particular chart is starting to turn around and we've seen a turnaround right in here. How we draw the lines with the CTKS method is incredibly precise. We don't do it like this, but I'm just trying to draw on the screen to help you to look at what I'm looking at. I'd like to give you some tips on how you can use objective dynamic market structure. Let's turn to ADA. And when we look at ADA, the one thing that we can see, price has been making a downtrend, but we don't know the structure until we turn on the indicator. Let's go for that now and see where the CTKS method has marked up price since 2017. Again, we're not trying to look 
at just what's in the window in front of us. We want to look at what's outside in the entire landscape of price. One thing that we see, definitely see, around this area, there was a structural support when price was above. Structural support, another structural support, another structural support, and another one. But these ones are lighter. There was so much support underpinning ADA. But what happened? This gave it away. When you get a cracking of the concrete, this is what I call this particular price action. It's not good. That actually means that the price is in all likelihood heading down to the next series of structural support levels. A lot of people could easily buy around here, but when we see signs like that, the cracking of the concrete, the concrete once cracked gets weaker and weaker, and in all probability we're going down. All of trading and investing is probabilistic, and that's important to know. When we lost this lower structural support level, which was a light one, where did we get caught? We got caught at this next structural support level. This gives you x-ray vision inside financial markets. But notice this one. This one is a confluence of smart money levels. There's a variety of them hanging out there, as well as a lower one down here. And you can see these gravitational levels are very good at stopping price from going down. A lot of people, when they see price coming down, they think it's just going to go to zero. It's just going to go to another SL or more particularly, a confluence of them, a collection of them. Please let me know if you find this kind of analysis helpful. In crypto news today, the probability of a Bitcoin ETF is increasing. The SEC has given up. Reuters has reported that the US Securities Exchange Commission does not plan to appeal the court decision on the grayscale Bitcoin ETF. Previously, the Securities Exchange Commission rejected the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust application on the grounds that the products were not designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices. Analysts are now saying there's a 90% chance of approval for the Grayscale ETF by January 2024. In other news, Ferrari added Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. You can now buy your Ferrari with Bitcoin, Ethereum or USDC, or why not all three? Also, there will be no fees or surcharges if you pay with crypto. It's really good to keep yourself up to date with the key macroeconomic data releases. If you go to ctksnews.com across to the market analysis tab, we can see next week we have the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index. In a few days, retail sales are coming out. In about four days, Fed Chair Powell gives his speech. In the last trading session across the main markets, the US markets were red. And now we look at the crypto market. Crypto market is kind of just hovering, just treading water. If you go across to the market cap tab, you can see crypto bubbles. And let's have a look at the daily basis. Wow. Bond, Loom and Uki are going nuts. Rockapool and Trust Wallet are going nuts as well. There are always opportunities inside every single market. Crypto is undoubtedly opportunity filled. We can see the crypto market is relatively flat, except for Dogecoin, which is starting to bark. Let's have a look at the greatest gainers. Over the top, Binance coins. We can see Barn Bridge right out in front, 81.3% up to date, followed by Uki, Loom, Rockapool, Trust Wallet, Teller, Drep, Liquidity. And let's have a look at the greatest losers. Hollow, Unfi Protocol, Alchemix, Hashflow, Merit Circle, and Decred. The FOMC will meet on the 1st of November and we're seeing a reduction in the probability of a 25 basis point increase in the federal funds rate. It's dropped to 6.2%, down from a week ago, 27.1%. This is really good for the markets. The crypto market is becoming increasingly optimistic. You can see the levels of fear have been coming down. 
Turning to 24-hour liquidation, we've seen 21.71 million in total liquidations, the majority being short liquidations. And when we look across the past 12 hours, pretty much all shorts. What about the past four? Starting to get some longs in there. And the past hour, we're getting some long liquidations inside Bitcoin and what I call trouble. Congratulations again to Crypto Scotty, who was the very proud recipient of the Perperatum CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. Well done, my friend, and many thanks again to Perperatum. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.